Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Financial Dads Podcast. My name is Paul Fagan. I'm here with Jody Fisher. Hey, Jody, how you doing today? Hello, Paul. How are you? Doing very well. Doing very well. Uh, this podcast is for all the dads out there who struggle with life's topics as they are related to family and finances. Our hope is that we can provide our thoughts, successes, and mistakes and share them with all of you. Normally, I'm the one who does the intros of the topics and gets things kicked off. Today, I'm going to hand over the mic to Jody for a topic he said he wanted to talk about. So we're going to switch things up a little bit today. So, Jody, take it away. Yeah, thanks, Paul. And, and we love switching things up. And let's mention, before we get into it, this is podcast number 16. So we hit a little mini milestone last time with episode 15, which, you know, for something that started out just you and me with a little brainstorm, um, to, to get into 15 and now 16 episodes, you know, that's another notch in the belt. So congratulations to us. Yeah. Yes, yes, thank you. I agree. <laughs> and I agree. Everyone, and thanks to everyone who's listening. You know, I mean, we you were talking before we got on about about all the people you're running into in your in your day to day who tell you that you're they're listening and they're giving us ideas and, and we love getting the feedback. Yeah, it it has been great and and thank you for everyone who's been listening. I've been using uh, this as a conversation starter with with friends and family and and colleagues and and it's been interesting because the feedback is always great. The uh, the topic always fascinates people. Right, because you know, you, 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 it's it's definitely an icebreaker topic, Jody. So thank you for uh, doing this with me, because it's been uh, it's been great talking to new people that um, I've never met before, and and, you, and they, you talk about different things, and then you mention podcasting, and you go down that rabbit hole for like a half hour, right? Yeah. And uh, you talk about podcasting, then personal finance, because everybody at the end of the day has some level of interest in personal finance, because they have to, right? Because that's a primary focus if you're at a job that's why you're there you need your work you're earning money right and and that's you're earning a personal paycheck that you're taking and you're buying personal items and you're supporting your family and everything so um, I think it's a great topic that not everyone thinks about on a regular basis but when it's brought up in conversation everyone always has some level of opinion or idea and they're always willing to talk about it so that's what I've been finding lately Jody I don't know if you find the same thing yeah, absolutely. And and I think that any level of conversation that sort of helps spread uh, information and understanding and new ideas around is great. I mean, when we went into this, Paul, you know, 15, 16 episodes ago, we, we were right up front with it and saying, look, we're not financial experts. We're dads and we're here. And it, it's in the intro every week. You know, we're here to share the stuff that we've done, the the mistakes we've made, the successes that we've had in the interest of just passing all that along and passing that around and um, allowing people to draw from it what they will. You know, we're not going to sit here and tell you what stocks to invest in. We're not going to tell you, um, you know, that the, what, what the financial future of the of the economy holds. Um, we're here to talk to you about the regular day in, day out dad stuff of managing money, managing finances, managing your family um, in the hopes that whatever you can take from this will be beneficial. Yep, and, and emphasis on mistakes, right? Because Woo. we've made a lot of them over the years, and I think every episode we definitely highlight where we went wrong, you know, either of us or both of us, and we try to convey, and, and hopefully um, folks out there listening to this podcast will make less mistakes than than we did in the future. So, um, but I know we sidebar here, but I guess we'll jump into the to to the podcast a bit, Jody. So I'll let you I'll let you run with the ball. Well, we're going to segue into do, we're doing things right here, and this week um, I wanted to flip the script, Paul, and put a little more emphasis on you. I'm usually the guy who is the color commentator and sucks all the air out of the room, <laughs> um, and you do such a great job of steering our conversation every week. So I wanted to flip it around a little bit and put put the focus on you. Um, having me ask the questions and have you give your insights on something that you've done that I think is really applicable to our weekly conversation about finance and our topic today being discipline. Um, what does it take to start, to maintain, and to succeed in any kind of a plan, be it financial or anything else? And I wanted to make a bit of an analogy here, um, Paul, to your personal You know, you and I have known each other for more than 20 years. When you and I met, um, we were both big dudes. Um, and you today are a picture of fitness. Um, you know, you lost a lot of weight in the last several years, and I'll let you tell the story. 
Um, but it has impressed me incredibly um, what you've been able to do and how you've been able to change not just your your physical image, but the way you live your life. And, and I'm sure that it's made not just a difference in that number on a scale, but a, a difference in the in your happiness level, in the way you're able to live your life, the things you're able to do, and so I wanted to sort of make that analogy of discipline from a weight loss plan or or fitness regimen to a financial plan, and talk a little bit about um, how you went about that. So just to set the stage, maybe Paul, why don't you rewind the clock a little bit and help us understand? you know, where you started and where you are today. Well, I, I appreciate that, Jody. Um, it, it is a story I've told um, because people who have known me for many years, if they haven't seen me in a while, especially um, since I lost the weight, it, it could be jarring. I've had that happen where I've, I've tapped someone on the shoulder on the street and they've wanted to punch me because they really weren't sure who I was. And, and I didn't realize how drastic it was until those types of things started happening. So the backstory it happened, is... It happened to me. I didn't see you for like... a more than a year and we made a date to to grab a cup of coffee and i look down the street i'm looking for you, you and you're texting me and you're saying yeah i'm on the corner i'm looking i'm like you're not on the corner <laughs> and then all of a sudden i see your face and i'm like holy mackerel look at you so go ahead I'm yeah no 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 i appreciate it like i said that keeps my motivation going in fact uh, my gym picture uh every time they have a new attendant at the gym i go to uh near my house um i'll always get a comment like that's not you. And I said, yep, I'm never changing that picture, right? That picture is going to stay there because every once in a while I still need that encouragement. Um, but the, the short story was that between December of 11 and December of 12, I lost over 100 pounds. I think at my peak weight loss, I was hovering around 112 pounds down, right? Now, I've, there's a little bit of fluctuation that happens, but um, I've never gone back near, anywhere near um, – the, 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 where, where my, where my peak weight was, right. In terms of, um, how heavy I was. Um, and basically it started in probably the summer of 11 where, um, I, I was working at a firm and I had a new manager and, um, his name was Eric and, and he was a good motivator. Um, he, he worked with me and he became a, a good friend of mine and, and he was encouraging me to, to lose the weight, uh, as a friend. Um, and, and he, he kept saying, you know, really, you know, you could, you know, if you go during lunch or before you come to the office, you know, you really should try to start working out. And then I had a friend, Jonathan, um, who also worked there and, and he had the same level of encouragement. He used to go to the gym across the street from where, uh, we worked and he would say, Hey, you should come with me. You should come with me. And then I just kind of, you know, my normal procrastination, just, you know, I was comfortable at home. I would get home. I had my boy at the time. I just was, uh, I had my, my daughter and, you know, things were going okay, but I became that couch potato to the point where my son, Andrew, you know, would want to go play outside. And I was with my iPad. And one day he looked at me and, you know, and he said, oh, dad, he goes, you're so lazy. And I said, whew, well, I really can't say anything about that, right? Like I could turn around, but he was frustrated. Right? Clearly frustrated. I wasn't playing with him. I was coming home from work, dead tired, um, eating, and then sitting on the couch, probably some more eating, and then going to bed. So that was my lifestyle. So around December of 11, um, I got a notification from the gym across the street that they were having some sort of sale. And I thought, well, maybe that's my motivator, right? I'll do that. But of course, in my, I procrastinated again, and the, the, the clock ticked away, and, and the offer went away. And so... I emailed the, the gentleman that, whose name was on the email and said, oh, I realized that the, the offer's over, but you know maybe I'll come in there in January. And, and he emailed me back. He says, listen, if you come to me in the next two days, he goes, I'll give you that price. I'll give you that price, no problem. So I don't know what flipped the, the switch in my head, but I figured I got to jump in and try it. So grabbed the gym bag, um, filled it with some shorts and a T-shirt and some sneakers, during lunch one day, walked across the street, signed the paperwork, it meant went immediately to the locker room, put on a gym outfit, and started on an elliptical machine for a half hour. And that was how I started. And, and, and in parallel to that, I knew that I didn't want to be one of those folks, because I've seen this before, where people start to yo-yo, uh, weights up and down, or they don't address the other side of the, of the weight problem, which is the intake, the food. 
So I downloaded this application called Lose It, and I set a goal for myself to lose 30 pounds um, over the next you know three months, and that was my target weight for a long. You know, that's what I always figured. I'll lose 30 pounds, and I guess I was so big, I I was dropping at least a pound, pound and a half every week. I started going every day to the gym, and I started watching the calories, and to the point where. On the weekends, Saturday mornings at 7 a.m. and Sunday mornings at 8 a.m., I was out of the house. I was at the gym. And I remember the first couple of months, my wife was like, when is the charade going to be over? Like, <laughs> like, I can't believe he's sticking with it. But I guess what started to motivate me was seeing progress, small snippets of progress over time. So when I hit that 30-pound mark of oh God, I guess I hit it within the first, easily within the first three months, I extended it and went, okay, let's go to 50 pounds. And then I just kept going. I just kept going and I had a target rate weight by December of 11. I was down, uh, December 12, I was down 100 pounds. And after that, since I kept my lifestyle, my, my application reset my calorie count so I was able to have more calories per day. But I, kept, I, I still kept losing weight uh, because I kept in the same regimen. That discipline, that level of discipline that I had built up over the year stuck with me. And and today, thank God, five years later, it's really stuck with me still. Now, I've there's an occasional slip in terms of, and I don't even want to call it a slip, but uh, a nice dinner, and I allow myself those those things. But I don't skip the gym. I don't skip recording things in my app. So if I blow the calories out for the day, I put them in my application. So it's a reminder that I... Um, that I blew it out and I have to re- have to regroup, right? And and but it's a known quantity now and I'm able to control it. So I think that's probably the best part, but the important part for me was to see the progress and I think that was the most key. And then building up that mindset. Uh they say it takes 21 days to form a habit and I think that's what uh happened with me. I was able to form that habit within the 21 days. So that's how I got started, Jody. I, I hear you talking about as a great story, Paul. And, and, and thank I, you again. I'm I'm just in awe of what you have accomplished. Knowing you um, and seeing the change in you um, is just is it's phenomenal. Um, it, it you said that you set a goal right away. You got, you grabbed that app and you threw in what you said thirty pounds. Um, did those goals? And you started to tell a little bit of a story. Did you then, once you hit that 30 pound mark, did you set another goal or were you just in a groove at that point where you just said, I'm going to keep going? No, I set another goal, right? So what you do in the app, I'm going to plug it. I have a lifetime subscription. I paid the 200 bucks for a lifetime subscription because I believe it saved my life is, is lose it. That's, I know there's a lot out there that, and there's, there's no, uh, we, we don't have any association with any. <laughs> with that company we're just a small uh, time podcast here <laughs> lose it would like to contact us we'd that's right that, that's right but lose it was an amazing app and uh, i still believe in it and there's a lot of good apps out there right um and and so it's not the only one but it's the one i found and that's the one i like and it's the one i used so um but yeah i i set the goal for 30 pounds and then i set the goal again for uh 50 pounds so i just kept increasing the line Right. So in the app, you could say how much weight you want to lose and how much time you want to lose it in. So um, I just kept extending. Okay. So the goal. You think, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, did that do you feel like that created some accountability for you and sort of putting it in the app and seeing it written down like that? Oh, absolutely. And, you know, until you mentioned it, that probably didn't occur to me totally. But you're right. Um, that was something I did. And then you mentioned writing. I have 80 plus pages of a document that I keep on my phone that documented my weight loss, all the things I learned along the way. Like one of the tricks I do is if I, like I went, I use it last night, I went out to dinner with another couple and uh, the dessert came and I, I always order an espresso, uh, decaf espresso, and because I love a little taste of coffee with my dessert, but also I use that espresso spoon as my dessert spoon. So it allows me to eat less <laughs> as I'm eating wow, off that spoon. Trick. And and it really works well for me. And the other thing I do, I, I found was uh, a friend of mine years ago, my friend Ben, I used to work with him. He told me uh, anything that could fit. He had this little bowl and he used to eat everything out of the bowl. And he said, anything you could fit in this bowl, you could eat. You just can't eat more than what's in that bowl. And um, I started buying these three cup um uh, Rubbermaid containers, and I'm, we must have twenty of them, and that's where I pack my lunches. And if it fits in that container, I could eat it. 
And so it's portion control. So it really came down to the discipline around portion control and all those pieces. And it really does tie into the financials because not to segue, uh, the way we paid down the mortgage was discipline, right? Same type of thing where we had to consciously each week, each pay period sacrifice and, and sometimes cutting to the bone where we said, you know what, I'd rather not take that trip and put this money towards the mortgage. I'd rather not do this activity and put that money towards the mortgage. So there's definitely parallels and I think I carry it in life. And it's one thing is once I get on something, I typically build the discipline relatively quickly, but I have to start. That's the key. The most, The biggest regret is not starting sooner. But at the end of the day, I did start. I am keeping it up and I was, I've been able to maintain it. So that's what I'm, I've been happy about. That's, that's really fascinating. The, um, the bowl analogy um, strikes me um, really hard too. You know, anything you can, any food you can fit in a bowl, you can eat. And the whole idea is limiting the size of the bowl. Another financial analogy that I'm seeing there is that's limiting um, how much you spend in the financial world. You know, if, if you can, if you can fit it in the bowl, you can eat it. If it's in your checking account, you can spend it. Or if it's written down on the budget, you can spend it. If it's not there, you know, you can't go over, you know, I guess is the, is the easy way to, do, to put it in both fields there. It, it, you can't go over on what you're doing, whether it's losing weight, eating food, spending money, um, if you go over, that's where you're going to go off the path. Would you agree? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, that's where the weight gain, the occasional weight gain, and when I say weight gain, it's fluctuating a, a few pounds. Um, that's where it comes from it is probably when I go out and it just a little, and, and it doesn't take much, just like in financial, right? It doesn't take much. If you go out and overeat or you overspend, it can have a knock-on effect for days and weeks. It can, uh, whether it's... Uh, overindulging in a really nice Italian restaurant or going out and buying a couch on a Sunday that you didn't anticipate. Um, that big purchase or that big eating frenzy will impact you for days. You'll feel bad about it. You'll, you'll, you'll wind up paying for it, whether you're paying for it financially or paying for it through extra time at the gym and, and, and extra cutbacks. Um, but I've learned to kind of balance it. I think when I first started the first few years, I was neurotic about keeping the weight really down 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 and not going because I was very scared my family grew up heavy um, so my father uh, passed away of a of a heart attack um, he was you know way bigger than me at my at my peak and um, you know and I, I know that um, if he had uh, lost the weight at some point he probably probably be still around today uh, my mother in the last year and a half, uh, 18 months she's lost 100 pound, plus pounds herself so she got into the into the groove and now she's down over 100 pounds she was always a heavy woman and now she feels better than ever right she's shopping for all the young kids clothes and um and it's great it's great watching her she's so mobile and out there and walking and 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 and, and all the little ailments that she used to have with her back a lot of that subsided because there's a lot of side benefits to losing the weight um and, and so she's very happy with it. So I, I, it's glad that it's worked and it's motivated others in a way to, to kind of hit some of those goals. I've had other few folks in my life that have taken a page from, from my weight loss and have attacked it as well. So I, I like to think that um, the journey touched others. Uh, same way our financial podcast is touching others, right? Um, I do get feedback uh, from some, some of the folks that listen to our podcast on, hey, you know, I didn't realize that, you know, you really got to watch out for that. Or I didn't realize that when you're looking for a mortgage, you should be doing this. And and I was like, yeah, you know, and hopefully we're helping some people in a small way avoid those mistakes. And I think that's key. The, the story about um, your parents is is uh, is inspiring and and. You know, it, it's sad, but it's also inspiring as what happened with your mom, too. Um, can you talk a little bit, too, about the emotional component of the result of building the discipline? You know, you build the discipline to lose the weight you want to lose. You see the progress. You get to a place where you want to be. You're continuing. But at the same time, you're you're getting the benefit of that that emotional satisfaction. Can you talk about that in a little bit and sort of how that plays into maintaining the discipline? 
Yeah, I, I kind of, it's kind of analogous to pushing that boulder up a hill. Like if you're pushing a heavy ball or rolling a boulder up the hill, right? That first, until you get to the peak of that hill, that's really where your strength has to really be strongest, I think. Um, I think during the first year, especially the first three months, um, first week, right? Let's take it. Let's take it back. The first week, I'm like, what am I doing? I want that cake, right? I want to eat my regular stuff. Why am I doing this? Um, you know, you got to break through that those first weeks, days, hours, whatever it is, um, to to push through um, from an emotional perspective. So it was tough, and then. When you start seeing results, you get more confidence and your confidence starts to build. And I think once you push that boulder uphill and you get to the peak and then it starts rolling downhill, the momentum is easier to maintain, at least in my mind. Um, at least that's the way my experience has been. So I've been able to maintain the weight loss because I don't want to go back to where I was. And maybe that's why I was neurotic for the first few years uh, and very, I would say, overly disciplined, if that's a word. Um, I would, I would not, I would sacrifice not going out for meals with friends because I didn't want to overeat that week, which in hindsight probably wasn't, you know, was probably too much, was going too much the other side, um, because you have to have that balance. So I think emotionally you have to be careful and that could be a financial discipline as well, right? You can be miserly, right? Which is not good. Right, you don't want to be like the the Christmas Carol, right? The miserly Mister Scrooge, I guess that's what it was, right? So um, you don't want to be miserly either, because you have to enjoy life a bit. So we go out, like we went out to dinner last night. Now my dinner patterns are are much different than they were ten years ago, uh, but we could go out to dinner, enjoy a couple of glasses of wine. I'll get the fish dish. I won't go over the top on a lot of fried food. I like to eat good food, um, but I do go over the top, but not like I used to. Like, Joe, do you remember the days we would go out with uh, with our buddies from college for steaks and it would be like, you think we were all going to the electric chair the next day. I mean, you know, it was just like, we would just destroy the table, oh, it was right? Not, it was, not, it <laughs> it was, was just destroy the table. <laughs> you know, everyone was just eating like like they had like two practically two forks in their hands, right? I mean, th- th- we're going back. This is young days, right? Oh, yeah. And I think we've all learned from those days. But um, I don't go back to that. But emotionally, I think that I'm in a much better place with the weight loss. It's built up confidence in me that I don't think I've had before. It's allowed me to take on challenges I would have not normally taken on before i do yoga on a regular basis i do my exercise on a regular basis but i do other activities that it might not have been able to do before um i don't mind doing family walks um so there's a lot of cool stuff about it so you know that that same guy that was sitting on the couch with the ipad now i'm trying to drag my teenage boy to say hey why don't you come for a walk with dad you know uh, let's go for a bike ride, right? And that used to never happen, right? We just come home from work and just pass out. So you flip the script. You flip the script on him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ba- basically, you know, I don't know if I'm if he's if I'm too if he's too cool to, to 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 ride the bike with me. I'm not sure, you know. But no, I don't think that's it. I just think, you know, he gets into his 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 stuff and his uh, mindset. And but we do we do we do family walks and even family vacations are a lot more active. Um, you know, we will do a lot of walking. We will do a lot of. Um, uh, swimming, you know, whatever's needful on those vacations, we we will do, and we'll tackle long tours and stuff like that, and we'll avoid getting in a car if if we can, you know. But even little things, like I was recently on a trip, and I was able to run around that city I visited. Like um, so, at the end of the day, um, it was a very long day, a lot of travel that day. I, I even put in some meetings that afternoon, and then I went for a run, and I just ran the city, and it's so amazing seeing the city from a running vantage point because you get to see everything as opposed to being in a car and it's just one of those things i like to do and and i and i think that i would never have been able to do that without losing the weight like just never been able to do it so um but you know sometimes you have little setbacks um as well and you have to account for those setbacks where you may have to dial the weight loss back a little bit and and kind of take on some of those disciplines that you had originally because I think the discipline level for me has has subsided a little bit like I said I'm not as over neurotic but sometimes you if you let it slip you, you'll start to cr- the pounds will start to crawl back up 
and, and then sometimes you just have to kind of make a conscious effort to ratchet it down. And that's with the finances as well. That might happen when people go on a family vacation. You're allowed to spend a little more than you had planned to some degree, right? Not over the top, not double. But you come across a nice restaurant that you want to take your family to. You might want to do that when you're on vacation. You didn't plan for that, stuff like that. But when you get back home, now that you've spent that extra money, you have to put some extra discipline in to, ring, to reel that back. Right. And maybe a cut, like, just like I would go a couple extra hours uh, that week uh, working out, people might have to cut back and sacrifice on their financials a little bit. So that's how I see the, um, the, the, the emotional side. I'm not sure if I answered it the way uh, you had asked it, Jody, but, um, but we, can, we could definitely dive in a little deeper. No, I, I, think, I think you did answer it, Paul. And, and like I said, I'm, I'm personally impressed and, and in awe of what you have accomplished there um and i think the people who know you who have observed your change over the last you know decade or so um feel the same way um you're an inspiration to me whenever i think about you know going to the gym and wanting to lose the weight that i want to lose i always think of you oh i appreciate it like i'm like you know paul and 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 it's it's not one of those if paul did it anybody can do it it's more like paul did it a friend of mine did it he can do it i can do it too Um, And I think that's what we bring to our podcast every week, too, is if a couple of guys like us can figure this finance thing out, the people who are listening, you guys who are listening, you can figure this out, too. Um, And, Paul, the way you described it, you know, you went about it in your own specific way. But what I heard and maybe we're getting into a summary recap here. But, you know, what I heard was you used the tools that were at your disposal. Uh, Well, well, first you had a moment, right? You had that moment. You described it with Mm -hmm. your son. Like, okay, I've got to do something about this. You kind of took baby steps in the beginning, you know, emailing the guy from the gym and you're just trying to figure out, navigate away and how am I going to do this and what am I going to do? Then you locked into that app. You put the, you, you wrote it down in the app. You said, okay, here's what I'm going to do. And then you just got started. And what I heard you say, and you correct me where I'm wrong, is that it was just sort of this one day at a time kind of an approach. Yeah, until def- you started hitting that initial goal, and then the goal started to roll and roll some more and roll some more, right? It definitely was one day at a time, and I, what I had in my head was this twenty-one days to form a habit. I used to smoke back way back uh, in college, and and Jody, you remember? And and July ninety-seven, I I quit cigarettes, and and it was it was very analogous to that, where uh, you procrastinated a bit, tried different things, and then finally. Uh, weaned myself off um, to the point where I'll never forget I, we, we were I don't know if you were with us Jody I was playing golf in Queens I went to go pull a cigarette out of my my safety pack out of my <laughs> golf bag I took one uh, drag of the cigarette and then I crushed it out I took the pack I crushed it up I threw it in the woods at Casino Park so sorry for littering but it was at Casino Park golf course and um, that was it I stopped, and and what I what I used back then was kind of this twenty one days. I read somewhere you kind of takes twenty one days to form a habit, and to kind of get over that hump. And if I could stop smoking for twenty one days straight, I could live with it. And I I pretty sure that's what I did for the food loss because I think food was a lot more addictive than cigarettes, to be honest with you. Uh, but I used that same methodology where the mindset was twenty one days. Okay, let me get through the first 21 days, right? It's going to be miserable, right? I'm going to want to come home and eat and eat and eat. And I'm going to want to just roll off the, wa- the wheel, you know, just roll off the wagon or fall off the wagon. But each one of those days, I went to the gym, stuck to my food. Went to the gym, stuck to my calorie count. Went to the gym, stuck to the calorie count. And I did that. And then over time, it just, uh, it just started to come together. And it just became kind of a, a way to do things in life. And that, that's, how I've, that's how I've established it. And it's become a way of life now. It's just become the way you conduct business when it comes to food and exercise. Absolutely. Even recently, I was away on business, and I, I made it a point to I, every morning before dawn, I was waking up and, and going to the gym. It's just programmed in, and um, either uh, the gym that's in the hotel or where I was staying actually had this beautiful twenty-four hour fitness facility across the street, and I just was going there, and um, I just get into my rhythm. Right. And it's just part of the way if I don't work out that day, I feel lousy. Right. I just don't feel like my day's complete. 
So when you get to that point, you'd rather go to the gym than not go to the gym. So so that's how I think uh, through discipline, uh, you, you flip your habits around completely. So instead of procrastinating about going to the gym, you're procrastinating about not going to the gym. If that makes sense. <laughs> but but that's I how it, I, I think it makes total sense. Yeah, that's yeah. how I do it. So, yeah. So even when I'm away, because some because there's always an excuse, whether it's financial or, or food, there's always an excuse. You could say, you know what? Um, I had this tragic thing in my life or I had this traumatic experience or I'm tired and I don't have time to do this. So, you know, so many times I could have said, I'm going to go to McDonald's because it's just easier. Right. I'm just, you know, or, you know, I'm just going to buy that because I feel bad and I'm just going to go spend this money. So you have to fight back those urges and and stick to the plan. I think that's key. That's so well put, Paul. We really, really appreciate that. Uh, is there. Is there, in a summary recap kind of a way, is there sort of a one piece of advice that you can pass along to people who are trying to get started with anything, whether it's a weight loss program, whether it's a financial program, you know, building this concept of discipline? Is there one thing that you can say that maybe help them get started? Yes, I I guess I used to think about this. You got to swing your legs out of the bed. Um, in the morning, you know, it's it's so much easier to, to, put, to hit the snooze bar on the alarm and not go to the gym at 5 a.m. Or, or 5.30. And and there were mornings I just, the best thing to do is just throw the covers off of you and, and swing your legs over the bed and, and get up. That's the hardest part is starting. Once you start, it, 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 once you start that day, it, 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 that you've, you've, once you get past that point, um, that's the biggest part, whether it's financial or or weight loss, you have to start. I think that was, like I said, my biggest regret. And for those of you out there listening, if you're in a financial bind, just start. Uh, if you're uh, you're not happy with your weight, just start. You have to swing your legs out of bed and, and just start it. And it doesn't matter if that day you walk five minutes or you go outside and run five minutes, right? Just start, do something, right, to get yourself going. But you really do have to start. And I think that's where a lot of people fall short and it's like ripping off a Band-Aid. But once you start the day um, or you start the program, it'll get easier over time. That's going to be our new hashtag, swing your legs out of bed. It's a long one, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. that's a really, really good one. I love it. Yeah, that's I what came it. into my mind because I used to have to do that. <laughs> like, in the first thing in the morning, I would just throw them back and say, okay, we're, we're got to get to the gym. It's 5.15. I, I want to get there by 5.30. That's awesome. Paul, so. thank you so much for sharing your story today. No, thank you, Jody. Uh, like this I was said, fun. This was fun. I appreciate it. Really inspiring. And I think everybody can take something from what you said today and a lot of great things from what you said today because it's just a, it's a phenomenal story. Um, and knowing you and having seen what you've accomplished in person is mightily impressive. Um, and, I, and I think you're, you're a role model to, to all of us. So oh. thank you so much for this. Thank you, Jody. I appreciate it. Thank you. Well, as you say every week, Paul, I thoroughly enjoyed our discussion today. I'm looking forward to the next one. Thanks, everyone, for downloading our podcast. If you have any questions or comments, please email us at financialdads, that's dads with an S at the end, at gmail.com. Or check us out on Facebook. Just go to financialdads.com. We also post videos of our conversations there every day during the week on Facebook. So you can get a quick shot of an important part of our conversation on Facebook, and then you can click on the link to go through to the whole episode. So with that, this is Jody and Paul reminding you that man managing finances can be stressful, but that's why the financial dads are here to help you plan for success. Have a good week, everybody. Be well, and thank you. Mm -hmm.